good morning and assalamu alaikum to all my lovely students of class 6 so guys today we are back with another revision lecture okay so as you know that the chapter british uh, the british rule or the british raj is one of the lengthiest chapter of our final term so i have decided to have the revision of this chapter so you guys know very well that how we started this chapter we started this chapter learning about the vasco de gama and he uh, how he just introduced the sea route for having the trade relationship with india and this was introduced by vasco de gama right so here you can see his picture vasco de gama india was very famous for its spices okay why vasco de gama felt need to have trade with uh, india because india was very famous for its spices and different things pearl silk gold like this right so every country wanted to have trading relationship with us so that is why uh, he introduced the sea route so the people can come and trade with us okay so uh, we have learned about the Brit uh, the british east india company right so here is something for you in this video we are going to watch about the east india company okay so what you need to do you guys just need to recall your uh, knowledge that you have got from this chapter and relate it with this video east india company the coming of the british to india was heralded by the formation of the east india company by a charter to the Queen of India. The company was initially set up to foster and expand trade to the East Indies and Far East. From a company trading in spice and raw materials to growing industries in England, the company took over the reins of the government areas where it traded through three methods, namely subsidiary alliance, direct possession, and through the policy of the doctrine of lapse. Initially, it set up factories and outposts of its trading to enable smooth movement of materials in the partners' store. Later, they built fortresses to safeguard their factories. And finally, they interfered in the administration of the small kingdoms that existed there during that time and took sides with different rulers. The subsidiary alliance allowed the British to station their army in the kingdom and also a resident to look after their interests. Invariably, the resident took over the reins of the government. Slowly, the king became a puppet in the resident's hands. Sooner or later, the kingdom was taken over by the British. In other cases, they waged war with the kingdoms and won the kingdom. The last method adopted was what was called the doctrine of lapse, where the king, who did not have a natural heir, could not adopt an heir, the kingdom automatically lapsed into British territory. This was against the belief of the Hindus and created a lot of discontent. From 1600 to 1857, the company reigned supreme in India and other Asian and African countries, colonizing many areas and extending the British Empire. Perhaps the biggest colony the British possessed during that time was India, both in terms of size and extent. Having a foothold in a country that was a gateway between the east and the west proved to be a jackpot for the British. Other European Beta voice is clear, but uh, you are not getting the voice clear because of the internet. Okay. Colonization, but did not get sustained by the government. The formation of the East India Company in 1600 by a charter to the Queen of India. political power in the West. The company reigned supreme in India and other Asian and African. Colonizing many areas and extending the British Empire. Perhaps the biggest colony the British possessed during that time was India, both in terms of size and extent. Having a foothold in a country that was a gateway between the East and the West proved to be a jackpot for the British. Other European countries too tried their hands at colonization but did not get sustained by the government. The trading company slowly now became the center of political power in India. And with the blessings of the British government, started ruling the country with the help of the Governor General, later known as the Viceroy. 
the end of the company rule came with a mutiny in 1857. The Queen decided to rule directly and asked all the company officials to return. From 1858, the British government directly ruled India until 1947. So maybe you are not getting the voice properly. Uh, let us see your internet or the Zoom, the medium on which we are having the online classes that does not support all the things very properly. So that is why that uh, this is not under my control that I can make you, I can make the video very clear to you, the voice clear to you, okay? So uh, you guys do not need to be worried about that, okay? That That is, just for uh, like, you need to relate your information. If you don't have to relate So what kind of things we have seen over here, we have seen that how uh, British came to trade with India, but gradually they started expanding their control in our region. Okay, so uh, what they were trying to do, they were trying to have trading with uh, India and they uh, used to send all the money to their own country, England, right? So, <clears throat> but the time came that they felt need to go from this region that was 1947 or the, a bit before that, right? So that is the thing which we'll go, uh, which we'll learn ahead. revision <laughs> Hmm. I know, beta. My voice is clear, but the voice of video was not that much clear. As I told you, that your uh, this medium of online classes, the Zoom cloud, does not support everything equally. Okay. If we are talking, if we are like, if I am speaking, that is not consuming uh, me, uh, your MBs. You know that for internet, we know that some of the things are like uh, heavy and they do not run properly it's like that so agar aapko bilkul sahi nahi bhi dikh rahi to itni koi masle ki baat nahi hai yahan pe theek hai so uh, here we have seen the east india company and we saw that this is the logo of east india company so uh, according to our book or syllabus we need to remember in 1600 british formed a company to trade with uh, india that is named as east india company right and after defeating european traders they built their centers in different cities that includes calcutta which is now named as kolkata madras which is now named as chennai and bombay which is now named as mumbai okay then we need to see the battle of plassey so uh, here is another video for you for Battle of Plessy. Okay, so I want you to watch it silently and don't be panicked if you do not get voice properly. Okay, uh, because that is not under my control. Okay, so just see for me, kuch karne hi sakti, uska phir me apko yehi bata sakti hu ke aap koshish kare ke bas concentrate kare, you will know that what is going on in the video. Okay, so uh, what you guys need to do, you need to recall your information of Battle of Plessy. Okay, so you know what happened in Battle of Plessy. The, the, this was the battle between a Bengal ruler, Nawab Srajadola, and British Army. And why it started? Because Nawab Srajadola did not like the influence of British in this region. Nawab Srajadola has just... Uh, assumed their, their uh, I think we can say that uh, he knew that what they are trying to do actually, right? So that is why he did not want British to come in the region of Bengal. The Battle of Plassey. You will be able to list the factors that led to the Battle of Plassey. This is the reason for the defeat of Siraj of Dola in the Battle of Plassey. The East India Company felt that the large fee demanded by the Nawabs and the local rulers to carry on trade was unfair. 
they also helped with the enlargement of settlements, buying of villages, and building of forts, which were banned by the Nawab, were necessary for the expansion of their trade. What the company wanted was a puppet ruler who would act in their favor. So they tried to replace the then Nawab of Bengal, Siraj ud Dawla, with one of his rivals. This angered Siraj ud Dawla, and he ordered the company to stop interfering in his government's affairs. He also ordered the company to stop fortifying their settlements and pay their taxes. When the company failed to accede to his demands, the Nawab marched with 30,000 of his men and took control of Qasim Bazar and Calcutta Fort. He cut off all supplies and support to the company's ships. To aid the company, armed forces were sent from Madras under the leadership of Robert Khan. The company's naval fleet was also sent. Robert Clive defeated Nawab Siraj ud Dawla at a place called Palash in 1747 in the famous Battle of Plassey. The main reason for Siraj ud Dawla's defeat was Mir Jafar, one of his commanders, who turned traitor and never fought the battle. Robert Clive had promised Mir Jafar that he would be made Nawab after Siraj ud Dawla for his services. The Battle of Plassey was the company's first victory on Indian soil. We have learned that the East India Company tried to replace Nawab Siraj ud Dawla with a puppet ruler. Siraj ud Dawla took control of Qasim Bazar and Calcutta Fort. Armed forces under the leadership of Robert Clive were sent along with a naval fleet to fight Siraj ud Dawla. Mir Jafar, one of Nawab Siraj ud Dawla's commanders, turned traitor and never fought the battle. Robert Clive defeated Nawab Siraj ud Dawla in 1757 in the famous Battle of Plassey. Yes. <clears throat> so I think this uh, video was much clearer than the previous one. Okay, and you can uh, you have seen over here you have watched in this video that how Nawab Raja Dola got weakened because of Mir Jafar because Mir Jafar was offered by Robert Clive that what Robert Clive said to him he said that he who uh, the Mir Jafar would be made Nawab after Nawab Srajudola. So what he did, he just refused to fight. Or just, and, and we should know that Nawab Srajudola's army were have uh, was having many of the commanders, and Me Jafar was one of them, one of the most important commanders from his uh, army. And when he refused to fight, so of course the army of Nawab Srajudola got weakened, and that is why they got defeated. Okay, so let uh, us. Okay, then afterwards, we have seen over here, we uh, learned in this chapter that. After Battle of Plassey, okay, here we have seen a reason bhi dekha hai ki, uh, why Battle of Plassey is named as Battle of Plassey. It was fought in uh, uh, on the place named as Pelashi. On that place, with the uh, due to that place, it is named a, a, as Battle of Plassey. Okay, this we have seen here. Okay, then these are the things which we know about the Hyderali. 
okay we know that hadar ali uh, was <clears throat> the king of masur and he was himself illiterate and he died fighting with his enemies now let's watch another video which is made on hadar ali hadar ali the vodiyar dynasty one of the most prominent dynasties of the south ruled the kingdom of mysore hadar ali and his son tipu sultan made their mark in this region Hyder Ali was born at Budi Fort around the year 1720. He started off his career as a soldier. He was a petty officer in the army and was assistant to the Nizam who was the Mughal deputy in South India. When the Nizam was assassinated, a lot of confusion followed and in the midst of all the chaos, Hyder Ali's services attracted the attention of Nanjiraj the minister of the raja of mysore hyder ali received an independent command and over the next 12 years the minister and the king depended on him and were under his control hyder ali rose in ranks until he replaced the king he extended his empire right up to the land in the north beyond the tungabhadra river He spent much of his time in building up a strong army to deal with the Marathas in the northwest and the British on the east and west coast. The Marathas waged four damaging wars against Hyder Ali, but after the death of their leader Peshwa Madhav Rao in 1772, Hyder Ali sought the friendship of the British so that they could together defeat the Marathas. The British, however, had other ideas. and wanted to undermine his power and use him this led to the first anglo mysore war in 1767 hyder ali's campaign against the british proved successful and he got the british to sign a mutual defense treaty with him the british went back on their word when they were attacked by the marathas in 1780 hyder ali waged his second battle against the british He was defending his kingdom as best as he could but then suddenly died of cancer. He was succeeded by his son Tipu Sultan who he had educated and trained well. Tipu was fluent in a number of languages and was a good student of mathematics and science. He had a great appetite for learning. He was also an avid reader and his library was filled with over 2000 books in different languages tipu was given exposure to both military and political affairs at a very young age so there is a question that what uh, is naval fleet when we learning about the battle of plassey the video that we watched on battle of plassey there a word was used repeatedly that was naval fleet but a naval fleet is same as the army fight on the on the land okay so there is the warship in the sea as well that is called naval fleet we learned one thing that that time the sea routes were used for many of the purposes as we saw that how vasco de gama started trading with the sea route so warships were also there with the help of sea routes okay so naval fleet navy that the uh, is a word that we use for uh, you know that uh, why do we use that word so na naval fleet is we are using for the army okay that fight through the sea route okay then what we have seen in this video we have watched that how hadar ali and tipu sultan played their role in mysore there is a discussion about anglo mysore war okay that is really interesting topic yes yes that is the formation of large formation of warship yes acha uh, what i was saying
Hmm. So in this video, we have seen, uh, we have heard uh, a line that there was there was a start of Anglo Mysore War. ये बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग कहानी है बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग हिस्ट्री है वी वी शेल डिस्कस सम अदर डे ओके बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन अर सिलेबस राइट नाउ ओके देर इज जस्ट अ पैराग्राफ फॉर हैदर अली एंड टिपू सुल्तान सो लेट्स बी लिमिटेड ओवर हियर ओके सो इन दिस वीडियो यू हैव सीन दैट हाउ हैदर अली टुक हिज पार्ट इन डिफरेंट बैटल्स एंड रिप्रेजेंटिंग द मैसूर Okay, and after him, his son Tipu Sultan, who had command in different languages, was very fluent for the different for different languages. Okay, we have learned about him uh, many of the things. Okay, so uh, he is known as the Tiger of Mysore because we know that he was brave. <coughs> and we know his famous word that he uh, just spoke out at the time of battle when sirangapatam was captured he was offered by british before his death he was offered but he did not uh, accept that offer of being deputy and work under the supervision of the british so he decided not to uh, accept their offer and he replied to live like a lion for a day is far better than to live for a hundred years like a jackal and then he died fighting with his enemies okay so here i'm having another video and uh, let's see what kind of things we are going to watch here Tipu Sultan was born at Devanhalli near Bangalore. His father, Hyder Ali, was a military officer in the service of the Kingdom of Mysore. Tipu Sultan was introduced to military training by French officers in the employment of his father. By the time he was 15, Tipu had accompanied his father against the British in the first Mysore war in 1766. In 1779, Tipu fought the Second Anglo-Mysore War when the British captured the French-controlled fort of Mahi, which Tipu had placed under his protection. Tipu's father dispatched 10,000 men and 18 iron cannons. In this battle, Tipu decisively defeated the British and brought down their army of nearly 7,000 men. By the time his father died. Tipu Sultan had gained sufficient military experience and in 1782 became the ruler of Mysore. He then started working on keeping the advances of the British in check by making alliances with France, Afghanistan and the Sultan of Turkey. In 1789, Tipu triggered the Third Anglo-Mysore War by attacking the British colony of Travancore. The war lasted 3 years. and brought an end to Tipu as he was forced to sign a treaty where he gave up half his kingdom and two of his sons as hostages until he paid a fine of 3 crores and 30 lakh rupees after paying the fine Tipu got back his sons in 1799 Tipu fought his last war General Richard Wellesley was on a mission to bring down the crown of Mysore and thus began the fourth Anglo-Mysore war with their march to Sri Rangapatnam. Tipu was caught unprepared for battle but kept up to his nickname the Tiger of Mysore. This time the British were too powerful and were able to surround the palace. He was however shot dead at the entrance. Tipu Sultan was buried at a mausoleum that he had built himself. He was considered one of the most powerful native princes of India and was said to be the biggest threat to the British position in South India.
Okay, so after Tipu Sultan and Hyder Ali, uh, there is another paragraph which is uh, in our book that is written with the heading of the World War, uh, the War of Independence, eighteen fifty seven. Okay, that is also named as Sepoy Mutiny. If you remember, we just learned in one of the line of that page that it is written that British call it as mutiny, right? So if you just Google. the war of independence you will find more of the names of this war and one of it is the sepoy mutiny right so let's see what happened in sepoy mutiny sepoy means sipahi mutiny means bagawat gaddari okay so they think uh, they thought british thought that sepoy mutiny is like uh, one of the reason for the war of independence During the British Raj, there was unrest and discontent amongst the people of India. The Hindu soldiers protested against the addition of Gurkha, Sikh, and lower caste soldiers to their ranks. The use of animal grease on the cartridges of the newly introduced Enfield rifles was the last straw. While loading the rifles, soldiers had to bite off the end of the cartridges. it was made up of either pig or cow fat which violated the religious sentiments of the muslim and hindu soldiers in 1857 three regiments of the army refused to use the ammunition of the enfield rifles and demanded that bahadur shah zafar take over as the ruler of india and the head of the rebels mangal pandey is one of the most famous figures of this uprising who attacked the british regiment he was later arrested and hanged this uprising came to be known as the sepoy mutiny or the revolt of 1857 soon after another regiment revolted 90000 men from the bengal army joined the mutiny after suffering major losses in kanpur and lucknow the british sought the help of the loyal sikh and gurkha forces and managed to ward off the army of rebels near delhi in response to the mutiny the british parliament passed an act abolishing the east india company india became a crown colony to be governed by the british parliament directly in the following year the title of viceroy was bestowed upon the governor general of india by queen victoria she introduced a policy of divide and rule which prevented indians from uniting to rebel against her yes so uh, here this video is ended hopefully you have understood the concepts told in this in these videos and the content in this video is not new to you because these are the things which we have learned not a single time but many times right so still you are having any queries so you can ask me if still you are having any confusion from this chapter so you can ask me that when uh, alina had asked me that is what is naval fleet so that's good if you do not get anything so you can ask me yes students now i want your participation you are having just a uh, one and half minute so is there anyone who uh, want to tell me about anything from this chapter including british uh, east india company battle of plassey or anything is there anyone or should i ask question myself in the last video there was a woman who was she she was queen victoria 
she was doing Victoria with a uh, after Sepoy mutiny or the war of independence. We have we are having in uh, other paragraphs as well regarding All India Muslim League or and All India Muslim League and uh, Indian National Congress, where we can see that how democracies started and how British wanted to bring the democracy in our region as well. Okay, so ye, uh, kuch states hoti hain, these are called as princely states and kuch states hoti hain jo ke democratic hoti hain. Okay, so ye agar hum, uh, Queen Victoria ki detail mein chate hain, to hum democracy or princely states ke discussion mein aajayenge. Okay, so isse bhi hum kabhi dobara se discuss kar lenge. So, uh, thank you so much for your time and don't be worried for your mock test. Okay. So we are having uh, less than one minute. Thank you so much. Take care.